Hello, my name is Jan. I'm currently the chief architect at Borneo. And here to the right, you can see a picture of myself with my daughter on Borneo a couple of years ago, one of our uh, family vacations. So uh, Borneo is a um, startup based in uh, Singapore, but our uh, large part of our engineering team is actually based in India. We have been building what we call the guardrails of the data economy since 2019. And um, what, do we, what do we mean by uh, guardrails of the new data economy? So um, both myself as well as our CEO and founder, Pritvi, have been um, working at um, large scale startups like Yahoo, uh, Facebook, and Uber prior to uh, founding, uh, prior to starting Borneo. And uh, at these places, um, we saw firsthand how um, you know these companies were amassing large amounts of user data and the inherent value in that data, but also conversely the risk associated with that data. So, for example, you know sensitive data, user data got leaked. You know can potentially harm the reputation of the company and erode user trust. Now, these companies were, you know, comparatively big and had large security teams and had, you know, the resources and the, um, uh, you know, the skills to to build out custom solutions to protect uh, the data of their users and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, it was um, protected adequately. But um, really, um, what we have set as our mission, uh, you know, at Borneo is to kind of build tools that empower companies of any size to protect their customer data and to improve user trust. So um, while with the uh, you know move to the cloud, every company nowadays is a data company, you know, uh, collecting large and uh, rapidly growing sets of data. Uh, not all startups have the you know same sets of resources, skills, or tools. To, to build their own custom security solutions. And oftentimes this leads to what we call privacy debt, where you know, potentially sensitive data is um, collected, but is not secured adequately. Uh, you know, the right security measures are not often put in place. And this can lead to uh, data breaches. It can uh, lead to you know, other mismanagement of the data, which in turn can cause uh, you know, erosion of user trust, you know, especially if some of the data comes public. So uh, the uh, solution that we have built at Borneo uh, basically allow our customers to uh, gain real-time visibility, first of all, into their uh, data sets. So uh, at the heart of Borneo is basically what we call our inspection engine. Inspection engine is capable of ingesting large amounts of data from various sources through a set of uh, connectors and is able to inspect that data and to detect um, any kinds of sensitive information. So we call this like sensitive info types. So examples would be passport numbers or credit card numbers, bank account numbers. Uh, but also uh, just uh, personal names, um, postal addresses, or really any other kind of uh, personally identifiable information, PII, or financial information, or also uh, healthcare or medical related uh, data. So, um, you know, gaining visibility is oftentimes the first step to, uh, to understand where sensitive data is stored and, you know, what is the, the right way to protect such sensitive data. So uh, with the help of Borneo, uh, security teams can, can more easily meet their customer data privacy obligations, even with limited resources. Today, I wanted to talk about one example of, you know, how um, Borneo was able to help a customer of ours um, with a particular um, data or privacy data uh, challenge. So this customer is a large Indian fintech startup. They have been around for several years and they offer their own prepaid credit cards as well as nowadays uh, digital wallets. And uh, because they're handling such sensitive uh, financial information, um, they have to comply with what's called the payment card industry data security standards, or short PCI DSS. 
So that is a large or a set of or, you know uh, security best practices and security measures that any company that wants to process credit card data needs to comply with. And you know, depending on on your uh, the volume of your transactions, you may have to um, undergo annual audits to prove that you are complying with these uh, regulations. Um, but but really, uh, you know, uh, similar challenges apply to any other kinds of regulation, be it uh, the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe, the GDPR, or similar laws in California, CCPA. Uh, PDP here in Singapore, or the upcoming regulation uh, around uh, sensitive data in India as well. So when it comes to um, managing compliance with such regulations, we can really break down that process into um, three kind of high-level steps, and I, I like to uh, you know to call them de-scope, de-risk, and document. So uh, the first step in this process really is to identify which systems you know that make up your data infrastructure um, really handle the data that falls under this regulation. So in the case of PCI DSS, uh, this would be cardholder data, so the actual credit card number, the expiry date, uh, as well as the three-digit or four-digit verification code and the cardholder name. So any system that stores or processes uh, cardholder data uh, would need to be considered in scope for uh, PCI DSS and would have to comply with the numerous uh, security requirements. So there are about like 200 plus security controls that are specified as part of uh, the PCI data security standards. So um, you know that then is the second step. So uh, in order to, to mitigate the risk of handling such uh, sensitive data, you, know, you have to uh, implement all of these security measures to uh, ensure that this data is uh, stored and processed securely and is not uh, you know, abused. And last not least, uh, it's not enough to just implement the required security measures. You also have to document uh, you know, if and how all of these security measures have been implemented um, or other uh, compensating controls. So uh, especially these last two steps um, you know, can be quite uh, resource intensive uh, tasks depending on the size of the uh, cultural data environment. So um, really this first step of descoping is imperative because um, you know, any system that uh, you, know, uh, you can prove uh, not to contain any cultural data would not fall under the scope of PCI DSS and therefore uh, you know, would not require the same you know, level of security controls to be put in place um, you know, as specified under PSI. PCI DSS. So really de-scoping is, is uh, crucial in this process. Um, but once again, uh, it, you have to be able to document to, to a PCI auditor, for example, um, you know, that um, you know, the systems that you want to take out of scope, that they really uh, do not contain any cardholder data. Um, so um, this uh, Indian fintech company we're working with, we're already processing credit card data. So they were already compliant with PCI DSS, but um, they were processing such data in an on-prem um, system, which they had built over the years. And um, uh, in order to, to solve, uh, you know, a growing set of new use cases, uh, you know, and uh, to you know make use of all the benefits that the public cloud brings, they are rapidly expanding the operations into the cloud. And now the, the challenge they were facing is that um, they had to be able to uh, prove to their PCI auditors as part of their annual uh, you know, audit requirements that all of that new data infrastructure in the AWS cloud uh, did not contain any credit card data and was therefore out of scope for you know, PCI compliance. Because otherwise they would have to you know, implement you know, all of the same security measures uh, across all of their cloud infrastructure, which would have been a very you know, uh, involved process. Um, so uh, they started by you know, looking at their primary data stores in the cloud, which was a fleet of uh, RDS MySQL instances. And um, we're using Borneo to uh, inspect the data uh, in these uh, MySQL instances. And uh, so basically what happens is Borneo will uh, um, 
you know, ingest data from uh, every single table in each of these RDS instances. Um, and we'll uh, inspect that data to determine what uh, sensitive information, if any, you know, is stored. Uh, so basically, uh, it will determine for each column um, what is the info type of that column. So that could be uh, it could be an email address, or it could be um, uh, an IP address, or it could be a timestamp, or uh, you know, of course, it could of course be a credit card number, an expiry date, or uh, you know, even a, a validation uh, CVV code. So uh, that's exactly what you know this team wanted to, to prove that their RDS MySQL instances do not contain such data. So uh, you know after uh, you know um, performing the scan, uh, which took just you know uh, a couple of days, they had all the data, all the metadata uh, about all of the sensitive info types, and were able to slice and dice that uh, you know see exactly which of these tables were containing sensitive information. And then in the end also produce a report, a detailed report about um, the kinds of sensitive information contained in these RDS instances. And you know, um, the, these reports actually did show that there was no credit card data in any of these MySQL instances. So with that, they were able to go to the PCI auditors and convince them you know, that these systems were uh, out of scope for PCI DSS compliance. Um, but unfortunately, not all was good um, because they had also um, used Borneo to, to scan their uh, S3 buckets. Um, so they had, you know, dozens of uh, S3 buckets and storing, you know, hundreds of thousands of terabytes of data in them. And unfortunately, uh, you know, within a few hours of uh, starting these uh, sample scans, Borneo had detected some credit card numbers and. In uh, one of these buckets, so that was the problem because now you know um, um, they had they knew that they had credit card data in, in at least one of their S3 buckets, and they needed to find out why and uh, you know clean up that data because uh, none of these buckets were supposed to contain any cardholder data. So when when Bonio uh, first detected credit card data, it, it immediately raised an alert for, uh, and also filed. Uh, ticket in the customer's Jira. And uh, so this ticket contained quite a bit of uh, context already, like uh, you know specifically which file um, or uh, which set of files had contained the data. So it, it looked like these were some application logs that ended up in S3. Um, but these files were quite large. So as you can maybe see in the screenshot, uh, you know, just this one example uh, was a uh, wallet log file which contained uh, more than four gigabytes of data. So uh, the, initially, the engineering team, uh, you know, was struggling a bit to, to pinpoint exactly where in this um, file, uh, you know, the, the credit card numbers were, uh, you know, found. Since Bonnie had not detected a lot of credit card numbers, you know, enough to be a problem, but not really, um, you know, a large amount. Uh, but still. Um, so uh, to, 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 in order to pinpoint the system, uh, the, the problem, the source of the problem, um, what, what the team did next is they uh, again used Borneo to, to do a, a much more detailed uh, full bucket scan. Uh, so initially they had only run uh, sample scans, which just you know, you know sample a small set of data from each bucket to just get a general idea of what kind of sensitive information might be included in the bucket. Um, but now they were running a full bucket scan. Um, and uh, these scans uh, generated uh, a very detailed result of you know, a list of findings uh, with, with every single token that was detected, including the line number, uh, as well as some uh, other information about the context, like you know, um, some keywords um, that were found close to the, uh, to the match token and that indicated the, the type of match, uh, as well as like column names in the case of like CSV files, for example. And uh, these detailed findings helped the engineering team to, to locate the credit card numbers in the files. And then based on the specific log entries to also determine the root cause of what was causing uh, the credit card numbers to, um, to get locked. So um, as you can see here in this uh, screenshot, um, what had happened is that uh, one of the systems was expecting credit card numbers to be passed as an integer number. But um, instead, um, the system was receiving the numbers as a, a formatted string. 
and uh, that was causing a number format exception. And um, you know, uh, it looks like this was some sort of like error message from uh, from an ORM system or something like that. So um, uh, the engineering team was able to uh, to, to pinpoint that and uh, suppress these kinds of logs going forward. So um, you know, uh, going forward, these logs will no longer contain credit card data. So um, all of this work had actually been done, you know, as part of a trial that um, this company was running with Borneo. In total, it took about three weeks, and you know, the main outcome for for our customer was that they were able to, to fast track their PCI compliance. Um, so Borneo was able to to generate uh, these reports and you know, detail list of findings within days. Whereas otherwise, it might have taken uh, the team weeks to uh, produce the required documentation to convince their PCI auditors uh, to um, take their AWS cloud infrastructure out of scope for PCI compliance. Since then, uh, the team has uh, you know entered into or has started using um, uh, Borneo's commercial version and um, are regularly using Borneo. Um, as kind of a general uh, privacy observability tool to monitor their data environment uh, in the cloud. So um, they have by now established a baseline, so they have a good idea of um, what information is expected in you know every single data store. And whenever Borneo finds any sensitive information that does not uh, match their established baseline, Borneo will generate an alert, either send them an alert in Slack or raise a ticket in Jira. And you know, with very minimal effort, the security team can uh, you know, stay on top of their data security, uh, even as the application uh, engineering teams are adding new resources. Uh, you know, Borneo will automatically detect new um, resources, new data stores as they're being added and automatically start monitoring them. Um, going forward, um, what this team is now next thinking about is how can they um, take this um, uh, this privacy observability and uh, kind of apply it to their uh, whole entire application development lifecycle. So instead of just detecting uh, such issues where sensitive data is ending up in locks, only you know once once it hits production. Um, why not scan uh, the logs of you know pre-production systems like a staging or a QA environment or even development environments and uh, look for such sensitive data um, there so that issues can be detected early and uh, remediated um, before they become a production issue. So we like to call this uh, application data privacy management. And it's it's just one of a suite of uh, solutions that Borneo offers. So from privacy observability to uh, solutions for data investigations, for example, once you have detected a breach and want to know uh, the impact of it, as well as uh, you know um, PCI, GDPR, CCPA compliance solutions, uh, as well as a next gen DLP. So uh, in addition to monitoring um, your uh, cloud infrastructure. Bonio uh, also has a set of connectors for enterprise applications like Slack and GDPR, uh, sorry, Slack or Jira or, or Google Drive. And so um, Bonio can also monitor data um, being exchanged through these enterprise applications and can look for sensitive data as well as uh, application secrets or passwords, for example, and you know, alert the um, Either the security team or the compliance officers, um, you know, depending on the specific use case. I hope this gave you a good, uh, you know, idea of um, um, what it takes to kind of uh, achieve uh, PCI compliance at a very high level, and, and how Borneo can help with this as well as with other uh, data security challenges. So um, thanks all for listening and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have about uh, Bonio, about the tech stack. Um, also, we are hiring for our team in India. So if any of you are looking for new opportunities to work with uh, you know, large data sets and an uh, uh, you know, exciting set of uh, technical challenges, feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm sure you had a chance to catch up on Jan Hacking's talk about uh, how 
Borneo as a single platform for data security, privacy, and governance is helping uh, hyper growth companies across the globe, uh, especially folks who are managing a lot of data, deal with this new problem of you know, increasing volume of data and value and velocity of data and how we are taking our learnings, practitioner-led learnings for the last you know, two decades and bringing it in a product form um, to, a lot, uh, to a lot of companies and practitioners. I think uh, Borneo's vision has always been to build very easy to use accessible technologies to help secure user trust, right? And what I mean by that is help companies not just govern the massive volume of user data they're collecting, but also help use it in a you know, safe and compliant manner. I think the next part of our journey is uh, the previous couple of years was based on taking this product to market, getting the learnings from mid to large companies, right? Uh, some of the global names in tech. I think the next part of our journey is that how can we take these learnings and bring it on to the masses? And when, what I mean by masses is to the rest of the smaller companies who maybe don't have enough security people in the company to use products like this or don't even have budgets. So one of the key things we are launching is uh, we are launching an open source initiative where we are taking part of our platform and getting it out in a in, in a traditional open source format, right? Which is uh, which which means that it's open source license. Anyone can download and start using it for free, right? The idea there is, I think, our, like I said, when we started the company, our mission was to become the guardrails of the new data economy, and uh, the goal here is to make sure that you know how we take our learnings and product and kind of really make it for the masses. Uh, so I'm super excited about uh, you know the second phase of the journey. I'm uh, looking forward to getting as much feedback and support from uh, other security practitioners, compliance practitioners out there. Feel free to reach out to me at pr at borneo.io or through our website uh, if you have any feedback or you know to help us make the product better or even help us understand the problem better, right? Because I think uh, 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 we had a few hypotheses, but usually we are a company that loves to listen, learn, and then build based on what our customers or what the audience wants. Uh, thanks again, uh, and thanks for Haskeek for this opportunity, for letting me share what we are trying to do in our journey. I'm super excited and uh, uh, just trying to, you know, uh, everybody as a company working really hard to make the life of our customers and security practitioners easy every day.